Brooklyn Independent Television. From soaring chapels to storefront venues, if you're in search of salvation, there's no shortage of options here in Brooklyn. But many of our historic churches are facing challenges that threaten to close the doors of sanctuaries, but not the hearts of worshipers. Fred Brown has the tale of two churches. Since September 2011, the doors of the old First Reformed Church in Park Slope have been closed to the public, and for good reason. According to senior pastor Daniel Meter, this 120-year-old sanctuary is overdue for an internal makeover. We, we think it's 62 feet at the, at the very peak, at the groin vault, uh, through the holes which have now been, you can see where the plasters come down. Um, this September, on the eve of Rosh Hashanah, while they were gathering for worship, started from our ceiling was coming down on them we had to scatter the right in the middle around the right, right in the middle we had to ask the congregation to leave the center seats this everything stopped for half an hour nobody was injured thank God it was just small pieces and then the next morning we well we had the service and then we closed the sanctuary because we didn't know what else was going to come down. This is a four-volume engineering report, existing conditions report, from 15 years ago. This has in it detailed analysis of the wood, the plaster, detailed photos of the basement. Of the, the old attic. First Reformed Church is one of report. several historic landmarks in Brooklyn facing structural changes. This church is designed on what's called the central plan, instead of being a long, long, long church like St. Patrick's or a cathedral, it's designed to rise up into the middle. After spending $24,000 on assessment alone, Pastor Meter says he has faith that the additional $800,000 needed to fix things like this will definitely come. We now are just beginning to plan on how we expect to do this impossible. Where do we go for resources? What, but I have to tell you that it happened again today. I was walking up Union Street. A, a, a secular person whom I know, who has participated in community meetings here, has said, Pastor, what can I do to help? I know architects, I know fundraisers, it's so, I, he came up to me. So we know, we're, we, we don't know how we're going to do this, but we know we're going to do it because of the support that's been in the community. Meanwhile, over in Bed-Stuy, Brown Memorial Baptist Church is also facing structural challenges that temporarily shut the doors of their main sanctuary. But after launching phase one of a successful capital campaign, the good news is that the congregation plans to move back into the main building for regular services by this spring. It's the people uh, that run the business, that run the government. Uh, it's the people who are responsible for the ministry. And so if the people are responsible for the ministry, then they should also be responsible to help with the finances. I am the um, person that handles the pledges two pledges and restoration pledges. When we started out with the capital campaign, we started out with the goal of $3.5 million for five years to raise that amount of money. And even as Brown came here at the very incubator stage and people looked at it and as the borough of churches and said, this won't last, 100 years later we're still here. And even on a Wednesday we're vibrant and we're serving the community. So certainly, um, this institution of faith is one that is paramount to our community. Saving these historic churches is a community effort that will require a commitment and a few extra dollars in the collection plate. For Brooklyn Review, you've been around town with Fred Brown. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash bit.